Good morning, Christ United Family. Psalm 150, verse 6 says, Let everything that hath breath praise the Lord, praise ye the Lord. So we invite you to use the breath God has given you to sing with us. And um, let's just start, if you will, by lifting our hands. Thank you, God, for every breath that we breathe. And we declare this song that says, it's your breath in our lungs, so we pour out our praise to you only. Let's sing this song to the Lord, Great Are You, Lord. Thank you. Beautiful sight to see you all lift your hands to our Creator. Beautiful. He loves it. And you give life. You are loved.
Good morning, church. Good morning. It is really warm, so I don't know how long my jacket's going to last, but you are welcome to get as comfortable. Nobody's wearing, well, you, a few of us are wearing ties. You're welcome to take those off your jacket, but just get comfortable. It is warm in here. And by the power of the Holy Spirit, it's going to get hotter, so there we go. So delighted that you're here today. If you are visiting or new, we especially want to welcome you. Talk to anyone here. This is a phenomenal church with a great community, and we would love to have you be a part of that. But for now, let's turn our hearts towards the Lord as we say together the call to worship. Give you thanks, O Lord, with my whole heart. Before the gods, I sing your praise. Yes. On the day I called, you answered me. You increased my strength of soul. All the angels of the earth shall praise you, O Lord, for they have heard the words of your mouth. They shall sing of the ways of the Lord, for great is the glory of the Lord. Amen. Please stand with me as we sing together.
So Jesus said, come to me, all you who are weary and carrying heavy burdens. The greatest burden any of us ever carries is a sin that controls our lives. But thanks be to God that God invites us to confess our sins and be assured that we are forgiven. Will you please join me in the prayer of confession? O oh God, our protector, we take refuge in you. You alone are the source of all our good. We seek to be counted among the godly and upright, but we confess that we have run after other powers and we have brought trouble upon ourselves and others. O oh Lord, our portion in our cup, you sustain us and lead us in good and pleasant ways. We confess that we have trusted in false wisdom and set our hearts on short-sighted desires. Forgive us, God, our life. Help us set you always before us and sustain us in your righteousness. Let our hearts be glad, our spirits rejoice, and our bodies rest in hope. For you do not abandon us to our sin or let your chosen ones dwell in the pit. In Christ, you show us the path of life. You welcome us into the joy of your presence and feed us with pleasure forevermore. Amen. Let us continue in silent prayer, speaking to the Lord individually. Hear now these words of forgiveness. Friends, hear the good news. Only Christ is in a position to judge, and his very nature is mercy. If anyone is in Christ, the whole creation is made new, filled with hope and grace, and fused with forgiveness. Amen. Magandang umaga po at maligayang linggo sa inyong lahat. Salamat po. That is, good morning everyone and happy Sunday. Thank you. We have some announcement this morning. Oh, but the first thing, just want to thank you Lord for this beautiful day and the uh, nice Breeze and the ceiling fan. Yeah. 
although I, I really think that right now I look like a glazed donut. My face looks like a glazed donut. It's a good thing I like glazed donut. <laughs> so anyway, uh, if you look at your um, um, flyer, your uh, insert in your flyer here, we have some announcement. The first one is giving to Christ United Presbyterian Church. We have a new opportunity to give to our to give up our tithes and offerings through QR code. Please note the barcode on the back of your bulletin. This one right here. And then the second one is uh, we have fellowship hour today hosted by the Richie Street Home, Ale, Joey, TV, and Miss Lula to say thank you, uh, Christ United, for all your support throughout the years. Uh, June 30th is Fellowship Hour hosted by Leon and Jewel Kelly in celebration of their 50th wedding anniversary. <laughs> and also their family reunion. Congratulations to them. <laughs> July 6th, this is kind of important one for sure. Uh, Christ United annual fish fry and the jazz on the plaza. It starts from three to five. Fifteen dollars donation accepted for the tickets. Tickets can be purchased from NL, BJ, Carol, uh, Calvin and yours truly, Annie, Felicia, Daphne, and the church office of course. And uh, again, we say happy birthday to everybody's birthday in June. Okay. Thank you so much. Now I call on Ms. Dolores McNeely. <laughs> Good morning, church. Good morning. How's everybody today? This very warm, I was sitting over there thinking, oh, I need to fan. It's really hot today. It's 84 degrees in my car as I was coming here. I'm speaking today as a member of GEM, and I'm sure all of you know what GEM is. It's Golden Years Ministry. Yay for those of you who participate. It was established and approved by the session in December of 2022. We were all here and remember when that started, and it operates now under the, the session for Community Life Committee, which is wonderful. The purpose is to provide opportunities for fellowship, friendship, and for senior adults in our congregation. But really, it's for everybody. But senior adults, like all of us, but it's really for everybody. If you haven't been participating, please feel free to do so. We would love to have you. And I'd like to give a special thanks to Mary Hubbard and Enid Allen for their spearheading gym a couple years ago. So that was really wonderful. So Jim uh, meets the last Thursday of every month. A meeting is next week, so it's the last Thursday. And we meet on Zoom, so you don't have to come in person. We also allow you to go um, on phone calls. So it really is for everybody to attend. For those who are homebound, traveling, or care facility, that's where you can use the phone or you can use Zoom. So it's really wonderful. In GEM, we have special programs. We have speakers that focus on topics of interest for our senior adults or anybody. So we hope that everyone in the congregation attends our, our GEM meetings. We've got four upcoming activities that are coming that we'd like to um, highlight today. And first is the men's clothing drive. And it's been a, a month long drive that we've had, but we need more clothing. So please, there's a bin in the back in the narthex or just see any of us to give us some gently used uh, clothes. And we'd really like for, to get those. We're going to actually benefit 
the San Diego Rescue Mission, which is a faith-based nonprofit organization that serves homeless men, women, and children. So please donate what you can. This is spearheaded by our judges, uh, Joe and Tina. So thank you for doing that. And they live somewhere else, and they're still sponsoring this for us. So thank you so much. And this is the last Sunday, and they happen to be here, um, the last Sunday for the drive. So go home, clean your closets out. We can take it, get it back to us. We're um, happy to receive anything. And then the second upcoming activity is the movie dates, and I'm real excited about that. If you know anything about me, I love movies. But this is an opportunity for us in the church to meet up to enjoy a movie. And this is headed by Rosie and Ernie Calavillo. And then next month on July 20th, we invite all adults in the congregation, that's everybody, whether you're in gym or not, to join us for game day. Now this should really be fun. And we received a flyer. It's blue, you all should have received that when you came in. Um, and so it's always also going to be really a lot of fun so you can enjoy food and fun and fellowship and you can come and, uh, and have fun with us on July 20th. And that's going to be hosted by Lynn Brown who is sponsoring helping us with that. So Lynn, thank you so much for doing that. I'm looking forward to it. And most of you are probably really competitive. So this is where you can show your competitiveness or not. And then the final activity I'd like to share with you is on Sunday, August 24th, so this is next month, we're having an oldies but goodies junior and senior prom, and you should have received that flyer also in the narthex also. So this should uh, highlight from the 50s to the 80s. This is gonna be a lot of fun. For those of you who wanna dance, you can wear what you'd like to wear. You can have felt skirts, zoot suits, if any of you remember that. Uh, saddle oxfords, bell bottoms, gowns, tucks, whatever you want to do from the 50s to the 80s, it should be a lot of fun. So um, you've got that flyer that tells you all about it, and you can also contact Enid, Allen, or Mary Hubbard if you have any questions, or call the church office. So lots of things coming up for Jim, the Golden Years Ministry. Um, I'm real excited about that. Thank you, church, and blessings to all of you. And our scripture for today is found in John 18, 33 to 37. Then Pilate entered his headquarters again, summoned Jesus, and asked him, Are you the king of the Jews? Jesus answered, Do you ask this on your own, or did others tell you about me? Pilate replied, I am not a Jew, am I? Your own nation and the chief priest have handed you over to me. What have you done? Jesus answered, my kingdom is not from this world. If my kingdom were from this world, my followers would be fighting to keep me from being handed over to the Jews. But as it is, my kingdom is not from here. Pilate asked him, so you are a king? Jesus answered, you say that I am a king, for this I was born, and for this I came into the world to testify to the truth. Everyone who belongs to the truth listens to my voice. Holy wisdom, holy word. Good morning, church.
there is one who received his crown in the moment of life. When he broke the seal of death, and when the days have come that all the world knows his name, and his enemies are no more, he will do what none before him has done.
Let her turn our hearts to the Old Testament for Samuel. I'll be reading from chapter 8, verses 1 through 20. When Samuel became old, he made his sons judges over Israel. The name of the firstborn son was Joel, and the name of the second was Abijah. They were judges in Beersheba. Yet his sons did not follow in his ways, but turned aside after gain. They took bribes and perverted justice. Then all the elders of Israel gathered together and came to Samuel at Ramah and said to him, You are old, and your sons do not follow in your ways. Appoint for us then a king to govern us like other nations. But the thing displeased Samuel when they said, give us a king to govern us. Samuel prayed to the Lord and the Lord said to Samuel, listen to the voice of the people and all that they say to you. For they have not rejected you, but they have rejected me from being king over them. Just as they have done to me from the day I brought them out of Egypt to this day, forsaking me and serving other gods, so also they are doing to you. Now then, listen to their voice only. You shall solemnly warn them and show them the ways of the king who will reign over them. So Samuel reported all the words of the Lord to the people who were asking him for a king. He said, there will be the ways, these will be the ways of the king who will reign over you. He will take your sons and appoint them to his chariots to be his horsemen and to run his chariots. And he will appoint for himself commanders of thousands and commanders of fifties, and some to plow his ground and to reap his harvest and to make his implements of war and the equipment of his chariots. He will take your daughters to be performers and cooks and bakers. He will take the best of your fields and vineyards and olive groves and give them to his courtiers. He will take one-tenth of your grain and your vineyards and give it to his officers and his courtiers. He will take your male and female slaves and the best of your cattle and donkeys and put them to his work. He will take one-tenth of the flocks and you shall be his slaves. And in that day you will cry out because of your king whom you have chosen for yourself, but the Lord will not answer in that day. For the people refused to listen to Samuel. That they also, they said, no, but we have determined to have a king over us so that we also may be like other nations and that our king may govern us and go out before us and fight our battles. Holy wisdom, holy word. So a few, it seems like forever. A few weeks ago, I started what I would call series light. We started with Samuel and the call of God. Remember, he worked for Eli, heard, the God, heard God in the middle of the night, kept going to Eli, and Eli said, no, I think it's, it took Eli a while, but on the fourth time he goes, I think you should listen, I think it's God. So Samuel became a judge, and he was for the most part a pretty doggone good judge. Did a good thing. Here's the thing that we're going to look at, and we're going to do a whole series ad nauseum. You're gonna begin to pray really hard for the next, your permanent pastor to be called, because you're going to go, we're still in sovereigns and sinners, Jan? What's the deal, pastor? Why are we still here? But we're spending a very long time looking at uh, 1 and 2 Samuel and into Kings to talk about God's call on the lives of people and how he uses them. Here's the thing about the kings. You're going to see that they are both good and bad. We love, I love the movie, and of course, it's Sam Peckinpah once again. But the good, the bad, the ugly. Clint Eastwood, of course, was the good, because he's so good looking. But um, then you have the bad and the ugly. And we love to think of people this way, right? You're either good or you're bad, or you're just so horrid, you're ugly. It's just in reality, that's not the way it is. In reality, there's good even in the worst of people. And even in the best of people, you can see bad. And um, it's really cute. My sister-in-law, when her kids really misbehaved, she would say, don't be ugly. I thought that was kind of a good word. But we're all of those things. And yet God calls us out of this to be something more than that. We've all sinned. We all fall short of the glory of God. And we all need 
the God who is truly king of all, but it takes us a long time to get there. And every day we have to remember that. Will you pray with me? Lord God, guide my words. I, who am a redeemed sinner, needing your fresh infusion of your Holy Spirit, may be so as we look at the scripture and as we begin this series, Lord God, to look at those whom you use, both wonderful kings and broken kings, people who were called, not necessarily by you in the beginning, but whom you used anyway. And Lord, may our own lives reflect that you alone are king of our lives. We ask this in Christ's name, amen. Frederick Nietzsche in 1988 said, God is dead. He just, he all figured it out. God is no longer needed. God is dead. The Presbyterian said, no, 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 God is not dead. We've just picked another God. Kings are kind of like that. You want to follow something, and if God is not answering you quickly enough, then you're probably going to do that. You're just going to pick another God. We do it all the time. We do it either in politics. We do it in... Um, things. You know, I love the things we collect, and I'm so glad we get an opportunity to give some of those things away so that other people can really make use of them. But there's always something. We're always seeking something. Most often, I see the God of power. Who are the people in power? Who are the people, the shakers and movers? You kind of want to stand next to them as if somehow it's going to, you know, filter down to you. But we all create God, so I think we can relate with Israel. Chapter seven, they had done really well. You know, they kind of repented, got back right with God, but it's a really long time. And in fact, from when they left Egypt to about this time, it's over 480 years, you had judges somewhere between 280 and 410 years, just depending on who you're studying and what commentary. But for a long time, generation upon generation upon generation, they had judges. And they were people who prayed to God, who God used to lead the people. But then something happened. And the, the issue is, is that they're, they're at a place and they're like, yeah, we repented, we've done really well, but they're kind of tired of waiting. Um, we almost, we're gonna use Mr. Bean another time, but we almost use this really cute little cartoon about waiting for God. But they got impatient. And if you're ever impatient, what do you do? You try and resolve it. Or when you find a problem. I'm a problem solver. I love to do that. Um, and so they thought, we're going to fix this. And the first thing they did is they go to uh, Samuel. So you have to give them credit that they're problem solvers. I, you know, rather than sit around and go, oh, I just don't know what I can do. You know? um, but they go. But the thing is, is they go to Samuel and they go, here's a 6 o'clock news, Samuel. You're old. I'm like, I may be old, but I'm alive. <laughs> they said, you're old and your boys are bad. It's not a really great way to start a conversation on how are you doing? You know? <laughs> Thank you for leading us all this time. Thank you for being that spokesperson. You are old and your boys are bad. Now, his boys were bad and honestly, he knew it. But he made them judges. I can't help but think my mother was a teacher, my mother-in-law was a teacher, many of you who are teachers here, and oftentimes if you, in the olden days, if your teacher said you weren't doing, you know, working up to muster, you would just agree, go home and, you know, have a talk with your child. Now it's like, well, it's the teacher's fault. Well, it's the principal's fault. Well, it's the school's fault. Well, it's somebody else's fault. Somebody else, you know, it's like, my boys are bad, but it's not really my fault. Well, don't put them in leadership if you know they're bad. And they were taking bribes, and the worst to me is that they were um, judging badly. They were judging badly, and they were not promoting justice. They were trying to cut corners. Justice is the most important thing that we can do to show who God is is to bring a just world, and these two were not. So Samuel knows this, but it's never good, you know, to hear that. And then they say this. They say, we want a king like the other nations. 
Not that we came together and we prayed and we fasted and we thought about it, and we feel like the Lord is telling us that now is the time, because in Deuteronomy 17, God had promised that I will give you a king in good time, my timing, my king, trust me, and they think it's time, but not because they spent time doing that. So the first thing they do is they tell Samuel why he's not okay anymore. The second thing they do in their dysfunction is uh, they don't go to the Lord, they just tell him what they need. And what I need is a king. Now oftentimes when we face problems, the first thing that we should do is what? Pray. I mean, that's like a no-brainer, right? And that was, that they didn't do it. We take it to the Lord. So Samuel is a judge that listens to God. And so he goes to God to get counsel on what should happen. And once again, the people have decided they want this king. We want an earthly king. Um, it's a hasty solution, but it's one that works because look at all the other nations. They all have kings. They all have what I want. We never do that, right? I'm like, car, my thing is cars, you know, but I'll get there in a moment. We want what Sally has. Um, and some of us think, well, why can't I have it? Here's some examples of that. Uh, we like to, to cut corners sometimes. Like, well, everyone, you know, kind of cuts corners on taxes or cheats or does, you know, because they're trying to get too much money. I'm like, what? What? Well, you know, you have the joke about um, money and what you give to the Lord, and so you have these three religious people. And um, the first throws up the money around the circle, and whatever falls on the outside, he decides is God's. Oh, great. So then the next pastor person comes up and he throws up his money and whatever lands inside the circle is God's. So then the third goes up and he really, with all his strength, throws it up really, really high. And he goes, whatever doesn't come down is God's, because obviously I'm lifting it up to him. We're always trying to cheat at something, am I right? Just trying to you know, get away with that. And I wonder if it's ever enough. The Greatest Showman, which is you know, a movie I've mentioned before I love, but there's a song, Never Enough, Never Enough. And, and here are all the shine of a thousand spotlights, all the stars we steal from the sky will never be enough, never be enough. Towers of gold are still too little. These hands could hold the world, but it'll never be enough, never be enough for me. Samuel is discouraged, so he goes to the Lord and he said, Lord, what do I do? I mean, I know my boys are bad. He, it's not, the text doesn't say that, but you know in his heart, because you know your children. What do I do? And, God, and he goes, they've rejected me. Here, I'm a judge. I've tried my best. He goes, they're not rejecting you. They're rejecting me. I am the God. I am their king. That's not enough. But go back to them and say, okay, if you really, really want this, I will give this to you. But be forewarned. Be careful what you ask for. Okay, my dream is a Maserati, I have to be honest. <laughs> what I don't want to do is pay for it, because I know what they cost. And I don't want to pay for the insurance. And I don't want to make the payments. And I don't want to take it in to be serviced. You know, these great cars that we make that, um, you know, I'm not promoting like Toyota or any, but they are cheap maintenance cars. You take in a Maserati, it's going to cost, you know, but we want it, you know, it's like what we want. And so the Lord said, let's just do this full disclosure. When you buy a home, when you buy a car, everything else, the full disclosure, it's all there. And every once in a while, you know, if you're signing something, I think they're taken aback that you actually sit there and read what they have in there. Most of us don't, we do, oh yeah, I trust you, we'll just sign this. So then God said, go back and tell them 
okay, but just know. Know what's going to happen. You're going to get a king, and then you start this litany, and, and I emphasize it when I read it. What's going to happen? King is going to come, and he's going to take. And he's going to take. And he's going to take. It's like in there seven times. And you will be slaves. Just be careful what you ask. How many of us are slaves to things we owe, or slaves to people we're indebted to, or slaves to the environment that tells us who we should be or what we should do? Just know, if I'm not king, know what you're getting. Know where you're going with that. Now I read, God has rejected his king and it's costly. He wants them to know that. Careful what you ask for, you may get it. Um, I'm laughing. I do, um, you know, pastors, we officiate at weddings. And, um, and so if, if anyone said, will you please, you know, officiate at our wedding? I go, sure, you just have to meet with me for the next six months. I'm going to make you go through this book and you're going to take this online course. And if anything goes wrong, trust me, I will hunt you down because I believe the covenant of marriage is so important. And by the grace of God, I'm not at 50 yet. I'm, I'm working on it, but I'm not there yet, <laughs> Kelly's. But it's important. But know what you're getting into. Know what's going to happen. So he tells them this. And this kind of segues over to uh, the passage that Rose read for us, John 18. So you are a king, not the king you're thinking of, Jesus responds. Not the king of this world, because otherwise you would have the chariots. You would have all the soldiers coming in to overthrow. That's not the kingdom I'm about. I'm about a kingdom that is so much greater. Later on in John, Pilate turns to Jesus, uh, from Jesus to the people, and he said, um, here is your king. And they yell back. Caesar is our king. They got distracted. Only Caesar. As we go through the series, just keep in mind that what I really want us to do is to look at how God uses people, the good, the bad, and the ugly, but to never, never lose sight that King Jesus is all. Amen. Amen. Pastor Jan requested the next song, and Evelyn is going to sing the lead, and uh, we'll join her for the chorus. Okay. Actually, we'll, we'll start with the chorus. King Jesus is all.
Okay, I grew up on that song at camp. <laughs> just, just a full disclosure here. Um, and I love it. It kind of says it all, does it not? There you go. All right. Hey, let's spend some time in prayer. I'll lead us in a pastoral prayer, and then we'll finish with the Lord's Prayer. Come before the throne of grace. Lord of life, may your church proclaim your saving power. Lord, in all things, may you reign in our lives. Let us not grow weary and take things into our own hands when we have to wait for your answers and your direction. Strengthen us by your word and the examples to do what is right and good, to always trust you, Lord God. Lord, we lift up the ministry of golden years and their desire to unite years of experience in community gathering and engage in serving others. We thank you, Lord, for the Ritchie Street Home and the Ministry of Safety and Encouragement. Bless TV and Miss Lula and their ministry. Lord, we ask you to draw us together, the body of Christ, gathered and scattered. We pray for all who are working for unity. May we continue to pray for people to be unified in Christ, not separated by geography or demographics, by political views or economy, but of one mind and spirit, seeking first your kingdom. We pray, Lord God, for the General Assembly and our sister Dolores, who is serving as a commissioner to GA. Bless and guide her. Let your spirit fill her with wisdom and discernment. Give her safe travels and renewed vision for your particular church, the PCUSA. Lord, we come to you and we ask that you would intercede on our behalf in all things. Lord of peace, be with all suffering, all who suffer from war, all divided people, all those who are away from their loved ones, family, and friends. Lord, we pray for refugees and displaced persons, for those living in inadequate housing and those living on the streets, for all living in places that are not life-giving. We pray for this country where people without shelter is increasing and the need of food and shelter are at times overwhelming. Help us, not, help us not give up in praying and engaging in caring for those who have no home, who are hungry and frightened. Lord, as you have given to us an abundance, may we seek to share with any in need, especially through our food pantry and partners at New Day and San Diego Rescue Mission. In our community, help us to overcome divisions, root out all that would poison or spoil our well-being. We pray for families that are divided, for all suffering and fractions and broken relationships. Lord, we, we pray, come, make us whole. Lord of love, we pray that we'd become a greater presence to aid rejected and feared, those who are rejected and feared by others. Help us be a stronger support to all those who are severely handicapped, those suffering from mental illness, to those suffering from acute or chronic illnesses. We pray for the brokenhearted and the broken spirited. We lift to you those on our prayer list in need of healing and of comfort. We pray for Lolo and Edie and Jewel, Jennifer and Jennifer. We pray, Lord God, for the family of Hannah, who is soon to be called home, though she not, is not a member here, Lord. She, Lord, has walked with you, has raised her children to love you and to serve you. We give you praise and pray that you would increase families who know you and serve you. Thank you for the answered prayer, for strength for all. We pray, Lord God, in the name of Jesus, who taught us to pray, saying, our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. I invite the ushers to come forward at this time. And as they are coming, let us consider all that is full of joy in our lives because of our Lord and Savior, and let us give accordingly.
us pray. Gracious and holy God, we are only returning what you have provided in our lives. Just a portion you ask, dear Lord. But let it be used to bring glory to you that you may truly reign in all things. In Christ we pray. Amen. Amen. Now in the last six months, I've been uh, occupied a lot with our son Jordan, and we're in the car a lot. And I have iTunes, Apple, and I, of course I have Handel's Messiah on there. And he kind of likes the other songs, but every time the Hallelujah Chorus, it begins, Hallelujah, Hallelujah, Hallelujah. For the God omnipotent reigneth, Hallelujah. The King of this world is become the kingdom of our Lord and of his Christ and of his Christ. King of kings, Lord of lords, and he shall reign forever and ever. May it start now in our lives. God bless you. Amen. Thank mm -hmm. you.